and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome to the penultimate weekend in La Liga as Barca are heading to Hitafe in round 37. And of course we're going to be talking a lot about that game, Barca's injury and suspension list right now. It's getting out of control guys, there's lots to talk about when it comes to the lineup. But first... We have to talk about Robert Lewandowski. We simply have to talk about this particular topic that over the past 48 hours in the Catalan media, and don't forget that, the world media, it's a massive story right now, which is why today we are going to be focusing on the official statements from Bayern themselves. We're going to be hearing from Lewandowski on what may have been his final game for the club. And we've also got words from Xavi Hernandez... It is all coming your way. It's exciting stuff. And remember, guys, if you are enjoying the video, and only if you are, please consider leaving a like. Let's get to it. Come on. But indeed, guys, as we discussed on the channel yesterday when we spoke about the possible signings of Robert Lewandowski, about Kaladu Koulibaly, proven, experienced, quality players who could arrive at Barcelona this summer, Lewandowski, of course, is a name that is massive in football. It's always going to generate a lot of interest. And I want to bring you this morning the latest update, and this one coming straight from Bayern, because their sporting director spoke publicly, and he admitted... And confirmed, Lewandowski wants to leave. He said, I have spoken to Leva, and during the conversation, he informed me that he did not want to accept our contract offer to extend, and that he would like to leave the club. And I think that's significant. I really, really do. Because yes, we all knew, we spoke about it yesterday, that Lewandowski had told Bayern that he wanted to leave. It had been very widely reported. But for Bayern to confirm it themselves, to outright say, yeah, our player... He wants to leave. He is really fighting here to walk away this summer. But Bayern do remain very clear. And they once again repeated their stance that despite Lewandowski saying he would like to try something new, he would like to leave the club, they say our position, it has not changed. They say that Lewandowski has a contract, which of course he does, until 2023. They say that is a fact. But of course, guys... What else were they going to say? I mean, let's be honest here. In Bayern's position right now, you do have a player that wants to go, that has his contract running down. They're in a race against time and he doesn't want to renew, but they still want to get the best fee for him. And that is why you will hear from Bayern. The fact they're saying, we don't want to sell. We're not going to sell. Lewandowski has a contract here. We're going to be firm. We're going to be strong. But the reality is, deep down, unless you say PSG, clubs these days, especially big clubs, don't really keep players against their will, especially somebody like Lewandowski, a player of his stature who's been an incredible professional during his time at Bayern. They've experienced unbelievable memories together, and I'm sure all parties would like to keep it very, very respectful. Which is when we move on to what happened after the game, as Robert Lewandowski there appeared to go over to the Bayern Munich fans and thank them there. And that felt to me, quite clearly, like a farewell. Because like I say, they have spent so much time together. They've won so much together. There is a real mutual respect there and an admiration. And Lewandowski appeared to be saying goodbye to Bayern today because after the game, he made it very, very clear. He said it's very possible that this was my last game for Bayern. He said, I can't say 100% for sure, but he said it may have been. It may have been my last game. We want to find now the best solution for me and for the club. And that is why I maintain that I do believe that the two parties who have been linked for so long, they will want to find a solution. They will want to find the best route this summer for all parties, which is why Bayern, in my opinion, will sell but it will have to be for the right price. What was also very interesting as well today was that inevitably Xavi was asked about Lewandowski and Barca's potential interest in him in his press conference. But he was actually asked there whether Lewandowski's age could play a part. Does that work against him? Would that negatively affect Barca's interest in him? And I thought Xavi's answer, it actually really opened the door for him. Because he did say, I'm not going to talk about Lewandowski keeping everything nice and official, nice and drama free. But he did say... 
I signed Danny Alves, who's 38 years old. He said, I didn't do that. He said, it's not about age. It's about their level. It's about their quality. He said, players these days, they're more professional. There's so many staff there who take care of them. He said, we see players now like Ibrahimovic, like Modric, Alves, Ronaldo, Messi. He said, so no, age is not a restriction and it's their level that will decide if they come. So Xavi there, I feel, the door wide open for Lewandowski. I have absolutely no doubt at all that Xavi would love to have him in his team there as that finisher, as that number nine, the player who is undoubtedly one of the best goal scorers in the world, even despite the age. You know, I said yesterday on social media that unbelievably, Lewandowski this season would have been Barca's top goal scorer, even if you only count his goals in the Champions League this season. That is how effective he has been in that competition. As I'm recording this, he has literally just scored his 50th goal of the campaign. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what age you're coming to. These numbers that he's putting up season upon season upon season, and he's showing no signs of slowing down. I believe that he'll score goals, and I believe that he would score goals wherever he plays. But of course, guys, what we can't forget is that on Sunday, Barca have a game coming up. And it is easy to forget that, given that all the transfer stuff we have going on right now. And of course, earlier on, guys, over on More Talk FCB, please do check it out. I spoke about Frankie de Jong and his future and Xavi's words on him and exactly what we can expect heading into the summer. So that was really, really important too. But... Barca head to Hitafe tomorrow. And importantly in this game, as you can see from the table... We need a point, either against Hitafe or against Villarreal. Barca need one single point now to confirm their place as runners-up in La Liga. Which, of course, like I keep saying, it's not where we want to be overall. But this season, it's important for prize money and getting the maximum that we could have out of this season. And that will represent a level of success. But... It ain't going to be easy, because certainly they're following on from our midweek game against Celta Vigo, where there were injury problems, injury concerns, but not only that as well, but yellow cards. We seem to pick up a lot of yellows in those latter stages there, so the players now will be missing in this game, because already injured, we had Dest, we had Sergio Roberto, Pique's out for the season, Nico Gonzalez and Pedri missing still from midfield, but along with that too now, we've got suspensions. Eric Garcia, he's out at centre-back. Frank de Jong will not play in this game. He is also banned. And Jordi Alba, really crucial suspension there at left-back. He is also not in the team. However... One good thing and some positive injury news heading into this game. But honestly, the best injury news is when I talk about Araujo. Because obviously, like I say, back on Tuesday, he had that head injury. Really, really scary scenes that surrounded that. Luckily, he was all okay. He suffered a concussion and he was then discharged the day later from hospital. And right the way then through this week, in typical Araujo style... He's desperate to play. He absolutely wants to be involved in Sunday's game. And he trained today. No problem at all. He is so, so ready to be involved. And Chaffee confirmed he could well be there. Because when you are looking at the possible starting lineup in this game, the team that could wrap up second place in goal for me, Ter Stegen, of course, Danny Alves will play once again at right back. I do genuinely believe that Arao is going to be there. He is the kind of player, we've seen it throughout the season, who will battle through anything for this team and alongside him, replacing Piquet, replacing Eric Garcia. I think Clement Longley will get the nod at left centre-back, but then at left-back, big question there. No Jordi Alba. Of course, you could shift Longley out there. You could shift um, Titi into centre-back if you were going to put only first-team players there, but I don't see why not that in this game, I would play Alejandro Balde. Yes, of course, you want to get the point. Yes, of course, there is something on the line. But this seems like a good opportunity here to give the kid a game, some minutes under his belt, and let's see what he can do. In midfield, Sergio Busquets will return. That will be very, very welcome for us. Gavi will play alongside him for sure. But the question now would be, is Ricky Pooch 
going to start in this game. We all assumed he would against Celta, with Busquets in that game suspended, but he didn't. Will Xavi in this game start him? I would say definitely. We don't want to experiment again and play with only two midfielders. That is something that I didn't feel worked out for us, which then leaves three forwards. Dembele from the right-hand side. Still no breakthrough yet in those contract negotiations, but a great display that he had against Celta Vigo. Aubameyang is back amongst the goals. That is fantastic news for all of us Barca fans. And like I've been saying now, for several of these past games, Ferran starting from the bench, Memphis again in that left-wing role, as he continues to play for his future. And I think that team there, with Ansu Fati, of course, once again, coming off the bench, making an impact, I'm sure, is very much capable of getting the point that we need and wrapping up second place right here and right now. So please, guys, do leave your thoughts in the comments down below on the two very important topics discussed in today's video. First of all, on Robert Lewandowski, do you see him as a genuine a genuine possibility ahead of the summer transfer window. And of course, looking at tomorrow's game, how would you line up against Hitafe with the limitations that we have? Who would come in to your team? Let me know that down below, guys. I will, of course, see you tomorrow with lots more reaction and I'm sure plenty of news still to come. Thanks for watching across both channels, guys. But until next time, as always, Vishka. Help us! Uh...